Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for um, the US um, track and field. And this is day four of the Olympic trials, of the US Olympic trials. And when I tell you this did not disappoint, oh child, there was <laughs> the drama, the drama, the drama. I almost cried at the end, but we'll get to that because that was definitely how things ended. Um, we will get to that. We'll definitely get to that. But um, yes, normally I will be on camera, but I, yeah, my, my, my phone's out battery. So we're, we're doing it this way. And anyway, without further ado, let's get into um, the festivities um, with everything that's happened with um, day four. So we're going to start, so we're going to start on um, this with um, the conclusion of the women's heptathlon. So, um, if you want to watch a full coverage of that, they do have that separately on Peacock. And by the way, I am watching all of this on Peacock because that way you can get pretty much all the coverage because unfortunately you're not going to get everything, especially with the field events so much. Um, but on Peacock, you can get all of that if you're interested in that. So just to let you know on that, um, anyway, so Anna Hall is the major story of this and, um, she was leading up to the final event. I, she was in second place, but, um, the big debate was how was her, um, you know, how was she was going to hold up, um, doing the 800 meter, um, event at the very end. Cause 800 meters, what the Hatapalon concludes with. And up until recently with her surgery running is her stronger suit. And, um, before they did start the event, they actually showed a package with her and Jackie Joyner Kersey, both our idols. Cause for those who know, yeah, she's also my idol. Also, I, I actually want to do the go St. Louis marathon in April, even though I don't like doing spring marathons for the sole fact that I think every year she's there at the finish line. Cause she's from St. Louis. That is one of my bucket list. I kind of want to do it literally so I could just meet Jackie Joyner Kersey. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to hold you. I'm, I'm like not really kidding at all. But anyway, so they did show this cute package of her, you know, her idol just kind of inspiring her and trying to bring her back into, you know, hey, you can do this because she didn't really get to, you know, do much conditioning for this. I mean, essentially... The Olympic trials is her conditioning because she just can't got out of surgery and everything. So she didn't know she was going to be able to come back. And so um, anyway, at the final event, which is 800 meters, she did complete it. She won. She killed it. So she went from second place to first place. And for those who are not familiar, both the decathlon and the heptathlon are based off of points things. So you don't necessarily always have to win every event is more or less where your point standings are at. And because with the women's hip top line, the points were really, really neck, neck and neck. She, she pretty much had to, she had to win in order to, um, you know, win the title, but also to make sure that she was in good standings to even get into the Olympic, um, to get into the Olympics because, the first, second, third, and fourth, and I believe in even fifth place up until this event, the points were not that much far apart. So, yeah, it was a pretty big deal that she was able to do that. And also the other thing that is tricky, second and third place, which were newer. This is going to be their first Olymp time at the Olympics, the second and third place individuals. None of them have the Olympic standard and she's the only one that does. And for those who are not familiar, I'm going to put up here what the Olympic standards are again. So you can kind of get an idea of what it is because that again, it comes up a lot, um, especially during the Olympic year world championships. You don't have to really deal with that, but the Olympics, you have to meet a certain standard. It's not just enough to win the race. So just FYI. Next was pretty much like the start of the men's, um, 10 hundred, um, wow. 110 me meters hurdles. <laughs> I don't know why I always say 10 hundred, but yeah. Um, the 110 meters hurdles. And so with this, um, it was just 
the first heat. So I believe the semifinals will be on Thursday and then the final will be on Friday or yeah, on Friday. I believe that's going to be the schedule. So we're not going to have any more going on until then. Um, so right now the favorite is Grant Holloway, but then we also have Jamal Perrett. Um, we also have who was not expected to be in the mix, but he is in the mix. Um, Trey Cunningham, um, Daniel Roberts. So I would say Daniel Roberts, Trey Cunningham, and um, Grant Holloway are definitely the clear favorites. We'll go a little bit more into it um, when we get to the semifinals, but I just kind of wanted to shed light that the heats of that did begin. And Grant Holloway is a favorite. Um, I'm going to wait till we get to the semifinals and finals to like do pitchers when it comes to that, but that's kind of where we're at when it comes to the next event that took place. Okay, so then there were two other finals that took place. There was a women's high jump and the men's long jump. For the women's high jump, um, the favorite was um, Vashana. I believe her name's Vashana Cunningham. Her, um, she's been in pretty much three Olympics in a row, and she normally wins. But this is the first time she didn't win. She actually got third place, but she's definitely still coming to Paris. So. Um, that's going to be something hot. And then we have uh, someone who was second place, Rachel Glenn, who I believe is a, has been, um, in the world on the world stage before. And then the newbie who won overall, um, the women's, um, national um, championship for the high jump, um, clarity, um, Kunhager, I believe Kunhager is, I believe is her last name or no, Hung, 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 Hung Nagger. I'm sorry. I cannot unsay her name. I will put it here in the um, description or actually up here on the screen. But anyway, she um, won first place, but she does not have the Olympic standards. So I don't know what the procedures are when it comes to this. So I believe it's just going to be wait and see type thing because she is straight out of college. So that was a highlight with that. The men's long jump. Um, I'll be honest. I'm not as familiar with any of those athletes. I believe all the athletes for this were kind of, there was only one veteran and then the others were new. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what happened was happening with that. Cause the other two, the person who got second and third place, I mean, first and second place, they're both from college. And so the only professional athlete that made it was in third place. And he's like in his like mid thirties. Um, so that's kind of the highlight of, of the field of what's going on with that. Um, also, the women's discus throws started and um, the finals will be on Thursday. So we'll kind of get more into that come Thursday. Um, and then from there on, then we go back to the track. All right. Next, we are back on the track and the men's um um 1500 um meter race um the final took place and this turned out to be pretty exciting but also kind of not at the same time because the three who won um were the three that were expected to win it just was not in the expected order we'll just say that um so cole hawker he's going back to the olympics again he went last time um, he also set a meet record, so he kind of killed it and he was not expected to win who, who they were expecting to win, who the favorite was, um, Nara Nagus. Um, but, um, yeah, Cole Hawker just felt good and he kind of made a statement there. So, um, also then third place was Hobbs Kessler and Hobbs Kessler, so these three gentlemen, were the three same three gentlemen that made it to the world championships last year um so it kind of is along the lines with that and then cole hawker and um Naren the goose both of them were actually both qualified for the tokyo olympics uh, but now the goose was injured so he could not compete so this should be good um a good challenge but this is one of the most difficult um, track um, fields that are out there. So, and and the 
lately the Europeans have been dominating this. It's been um, the Netherlands guy, and I can't think of his name. And side note, I knew as soon as I saw their names, I would remember is Jacob Insert is um, J Jacob um, Inkebrinson and Josh Kurt. So Josh Kurt is um, from he runs for Great Britain, and Jacob Inkebrinson he runs for Norway, and they have this kind of spicy ish kind of rivalry. They both like to kind of like give passive aggressive interviews by each other um yeah it's kind of quite interesting but <laughs> and usually um yeah on the goose he's usually in the mix with them typically and he's usually just kind of like not part of it so he's just kind of like uh and not necessarily he's not part of it as in like he's not competition he just is like a much more chill dude so he's just kind of like oh okay i'm just i'm just here to run <laughs> so it's quite comical but anyway well now we have colt hawker he kind of put himself into the mix and then we also have um hobbs kessler so it's gonna be a very very interesting event i just kind of wanted to add that in um yeah so there's that all right so then next after that event we had um the um rounds of the women's steeplechase um take place and what was nice about this is i really only know um gear and i think gear was someone who got in and this is just like a i believe this is like a semi-final so this was not the final or it was maybe the semi-final not quite the final i don't remember which one it, it definitely wasn't the final so there's that but um I, i'm calling it out because of um the fact that um what was kind of heartbreaking a little bit but also kind of a good thing like a bittersweet situation is that um emma colburn was there um and she's actually um kind of helping with um the um the play-by-play -play, um and kind of talking you know to us audience about the steeplechase and what's a good strategy and all that good stuff because as i mentioned i believe in the men's during the men's steeplechase she um yeah she is not competing this year because she did have a pretty gnarly accident during one of the races and broke her foot so she's out for the season so she's not um and that happened pretty earlier on in the season so she's definitely not going to be at the paris olympics at least competing um so anyway but um that was it was actually kind of exciting to see with this was that we actually had someone who fell during the steeple chase but recovered and got herself into the next round so this was also i would say this night night um overall when it comes to all the races were very much full of drama all the races were full of drama and this was one of those two even though it was just like a heat event so um I'm not as familiar with the other names of the steeplechase just because Emma Colburn's kind of been like the main person for the United States, at least on the women's side for a long time. And a lot of the other women who are competing are kind of newer to the game. But we'll go more into that when the finals happens. All right. The next event after that was a men's um, 400 meter race. And this was exciting completely exciting so we had all kind of the heavy hitters at this race um running so we had um quincy hall who's a favorite a michael norman we also had a chris bailey um who did good in his round we also have vernon norwood bryce Deadman, um the 16 year old who's just been killing it quincy wilson and then we also have matthew boiling and matthew boiling um i didn't mention him before because he's actually more known as a relay guy he's very good for when it comes to the 400 meter relays but not so great when it comes to individual event the individual event um because i believe they also usually give him the shorter leg when they do do the relays because he has a tendency of taking off really, really fast and petering out. And this event was no exception. So, um, but anyway, the way, the order that I mentioned it was the order that the people won. So, 
Quincy Hall actually won, which was quite surprising. He actually um, gave himself a personal best. And Michael Norman was the one who was expected to win. And then everyone else was just kind of, it was really Quincy Hall and Michael Norman were like kind of the two. And everyone else was just kind of like anyone's kind of game. And then Chris Bailey, who, um, you know, he was he was um, third place. So that's kind of what happened there. So Vernon Norwood was out, um, but he might be able to still compete in the relay. And um, Bryce Deadman, similar thing. He might be able to still be able to complete in the relay. And Quincy Wilson was in sixth place as well. And I would say usually the bottom three after the first three, usually they usually end up, the United States ends up usually using them in the relay some way or another. So we might not get the, get to see, we might not have the, see the last of Quincy Wilson. Um, and he, he killed it. He killed it. Um, it was quite amazing. And I love that he was, he was, he ran a respectable time. He did not have a personal best this time. Um, but he still did his thing. Um, so yeah, it, overall, that was a fun event to watch. And if you get a chance, I think I mentioned it before, definitely check out this event because it's just really, really cool to see, you know, young people early in the sport doing their thing. You know, the last person that we saw that had a similar story was Sydney McLaughlin, and we know what she's doing. We'll, we'll see her next week. Um, she's breaking all the records, but she started off on in getting into Olympic trials and I think she actually got into the Olympics the year that she competed and she was 16 and also 400 meters, but she was 400 meters. She was a hurdler. So yeah. Anyway, next event. Okay. So then the next event, which was pretty exciting also in its own right was the women's, um, 5,000 meter race. Um, so basically the 5k race and, um, what we saw there was, um, Parker, um, Vavily, um, she's this college phenomenon who just kind of killed the NCAA and took the NCAA by storm by winning multiple titles in both track and field and cross country, like a record. I think she did like a total of six titles between both disciplines, something that was totally unheard of from Florida. And she decided to be the rabbit <laughs> and it was a gutsy move, but it was also something she had to do because the caveat was either she does this and do not have and risk not getting the Olympic standard or put it all on the floor get that Olympic standard and hope you can hang on. So I definitely commend her performance. It was gutsy, but the drawback, the huge drawback is she literally has a lady of sharks behind her. <laughs> These three women who ended up winning were the same three women who went to the Olympics three years ago. So, and a little bit of a difference in order, but kind of the same deal. So they pretty much just kind of tucked behind her and just kind of draft her until it's time to execute. And then, um, L El St. Pierre did her thing. Cranny did her thing. And Marissa Schwartzer did their, did her thing too. And right when it's time to execute, they just passed her by and they may look like it was nothing. But I mean, they waited till the end to do it, but they definitely did. But what was exciting was Alyssa Cranny and Il St. Pierre basically almost had a photo finish because both their kicks are phenomenal. So after that, it was kind of a battle for, you know, Mar Marissa Switzer kind of was like, okay, I got third place pretty much. Um, and then the rest of the field was nowhere to be seen. So <laughs> the rest of the field was kind of a non-factor and Parker Bally, after she did that gutsy performance, once they executed, she was kind of stuck in fourth place. There was really nothing she could do about it. 
And then it was really just a battle between first and second place. And at this point, it was like kind of like a confidence thing and, you know, just kind of setting a tone of a thing. And so that's kind of how that ended. Um, yeah, pretty, it was pretty exciting. It was fun to watch, but yeah, Parker Valley, I was like, oh man, I, you kind of knew that's how it was going to end up, but yeah. Last but certainly not least, um, the women's 800 meter, what we were waiting for, a thing, Mo, they had a package on her and everything, and I'm kind of probably going to give it away, but this was literally the heartbreak of the evening, and it, everyone that had pictured a couple days ago, um, and I'll have them up here, um, Raven Rogers, Kate Grace, one who took the fall in the um, semifinal, and a thing more. None of them are going to Paris. None of them are going to Paris. Um, we have so the results end up being Mia Akins, who also was you know a major contender, um, and then we also had like Allie Wilson. And um, Juliet um, Windtaker and like the the second and third place purse people they um they were kind of a shocker they were not expected like they this was not expected and the this event actually caused them to get the Olympic standards so they're they're in in and um, what actually occurred. And may also have contributed to Raven Rogers also not being in was a thing Mo, and this is right or right right real pretty close to, um, I would say pretty close to the first lap, and so there was she she was out she was out um she still finished the race but she was out um. Because for those who have ever seen a Fing Mo run or see her stature, she's tall. She has very, very long legs. She's extremely tall. She has a very, very long stride. And the thing with her having that such a long stride, and it's been kind of her criticism, and it's been her Achilles heel, no pun intended, because this literally, um, this exact thing almost happened last year, but she recovered. Is because of her such of her long because of her stride being so long, she gets caught up pretty easily if she does not go up front immediately. She either needs to stay back and then go up front towards the end, or be up front immediately and not be bunched up in the crowd. And I think she was even trying to even get out of the crowd, but the problem is she was already in this crowd, and she tripped and fell. And she took like a nasty dive. And when she did that, um, Raven Rogers was kind of part of that. And Kate Grace was kind of part of it too. Um, they didn't fall. They were able to recover and just like, you know, go around her. But it kind of startled them up. And pretty much the women who ended up winning were not part of that. So that's kind of literally what happened. But what is so heartbreaking about what happened with the Fing Mo is she's the defending Olympic champion. And also, too, everyone was looking forward to see that showdown between her and that great Britain woman. I forgot her name. Hoskins or something like that, I think is her last name. That's who we were. That is the event that we were waiting on. Um Clearly, a Fingmo was extremely upset. She was crying at the end after she got done um, because it was really, really heartbreaking. She got off the field immediately. Because also, too, I would imagine she probably felt embarrassed because it was, you know, whenever you fall in public, it's not, it's not a good thing. You don't, no one likes that feeling. So it was pretty heartbreaking how that happened. And, um... What I'm hopeful for once the dust is settled, once all this occurs, what they used her for before for the Tokyo Olympics, they actually used um, a thing Mo for the 100 meter, meter relay. I'm hoping they'll use her for the 400 meter relay because 
as far as the um, 400 meter relays for at least for the women's um yeah there's not that much go power in order to win that i'm imagining they're probably gonna also use sydney mclaughlin as the anchor um i that's kind of what i'm envisioning and they'll probably use a thing mo again also because both of them were very very good for that 400 meter race and then they'll use probably alexis holmes and i'm not sure who else but anyway that is pretty much concludes the track and field event for today and when i tell you that was hard the last piece of it was pretty heartbreaking i was not kidding that i cried when i saw that because that i knew her olympic dreams were over with just like that and i mean i'm pretty sure a lot of it had to do with the fact that she was very under raced um she did not race much last year because her mental health wasn't there and she wasn't really feeling it and really this olympic trials was pretty much the beginning of her racing at all so and i and that was a concern that we had leading up to the final event but we didn't think it was going to end the way it did so yeah anyway please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the Mel nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye